Here on Trek Central, we have covered a lot of starships, including the Intrepid and the Intrepid, and now we're about to cover the Intrepid. Hey, don't blame me for the lack of originality in ship naming, okay? I wasn't involved in any of these shows, and if I had, they probably would have been named more sensibly. Don't lie, you too have been on Star Trek Online and considered calling a ship the USS Irma Gurdon, or in the case of the Klingons, the IKS Kaplastrophe. We all have. Just relax. But as part of a mighty effort to diversify the Starfleet fleet going into the 25th century, we have now been treated to the brand new USS Intrepid NCC-79520, a Duderstadt-class vessel. I have a feeling we're going to have a similar situation to the Prometheus here, if I'm honest. Was it registered before being built, or is it older than the USS Titan NCC-80102? Well, let's find out then, shall we? <laughs> we know you all love watching Star Trek all the time, so a big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Have you ever wanted to watch the latest trailers for the next Star Trek series, only to find them region locked? This is where NordVPN comes in. NordVPN has over 5,000 servers in 50 plus countries, meaning you can change your location anytime for a faster connection or to access content not available in your region. I like this plan, this is a good plan. So if you're in the UK, for example, and you want to watch certain strange New World shows on the same day as everyone else, or to get around those pesky trailer region blocks. I love this job. NordVPN also protects all your sensitive information while browsing and works on every major platform. Threat protection is a new feature which is specialized to protect you from malware and harmful websites. Right now, you can get a NordVPN two-year plan plus four months for free by clicking in our link in the video description. That's nordvpn.com forward slash Trek Central. Make sure you use our link, which is on screen now, and even better, NordVPN offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, meaning this is risk-free. Enjoy the video! Welcome to Trek Central, lords, ladies, and sovereigns. I am your host, Lieutenant Commander Adam, and as always, before we get into the video, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure you SMASH that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. And as always, please let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, we want to hear about it, uh, but please be nice. Okay, let's fly. So, the other, other USS Intrepid of the Duderstadt class. Duderstadt class? Dude class, yes. It's the fifth ship to bear the name, yet none of them were deemed special or distinguished enough to get the Enterprise treatment and carry an alphabet suffix to the registry. The preceding ships of this name were the Intrepid type, Earthship Intrepid NV-11, which was a Starfleet light cruiser that was in service in the early 22nd century, before the NX-class was launched. Its primary mission was to act as a part of the Space Defense Fleet for Earth and its off-world colonies in the Sol system, Alpha Centauri, Deneva, Terra Nova, and Vega. If you want to know more about the NX Intrepid class, well, we did a whole video on that a while back, so go find it! You can have a look at that for more details. Then you also had the Constitution class, USS Intrepid NCC-1631. This vessel was active in the 23rd century, and an interesting aspect of the USS Intrepid compared to other Constitution class ships was that the crew was entirely composed of Vulcans. 400 of them, in fact. Now, the notable mission of this USS Intrepid was on a mission alongside Starbase 6, to investigate the loss of an entire star system, Gamma 7A in Sector 39J. While investigating that area of space, the Vulcans would be slowly killed by a giant single-celled organism, a space amoeba. I'm just... I don't think there's even a joke I can make that's weirder than what actually happened, so I'm going to move on. Our next Intrepid is, of course, the Excelsior-class USS Intrepid NCC... 38907. This ship was captained by Captain Drew Deegan. The Intrepid was near Kittimer when the Klingon colony was attacked by Romulan patrol ships. Sergei Rozhenko, a chief petty officer aboard the Intrepid at the time, would adopt Worf, one of the two survivors from the attack, and raise him on Earth. 
poor Kern. Or is it poor Worf? I mean, Kern got blood wine eventually, and Worf had to go through prune juice first. I'll leave it to you. Warriors drink. Getting into more familiar intrepid territory, we have the intrepid class Pathfinder, the NCC, or I suppose originally NX, although it was never seen on screen, whatever, 74600. The Intrepid class starships were long-range exploration ships. The most famous, of course, was the USS Voyager, although the US Intrepid itself would be part of Battle Group Omega during the Shinzon Crisis. And of course, we have the USS Bellerophon, the one-time flagship of Admiral William Ross. So let me ask you, are you bored or otherwise sick of hearing the word Intrepid yet? I mean, I'm only about 4 minutes and 36 seconds into recording this video, and I've already said the damn word about 16 times. Settle in for probably a lot more, most of you who are actually here for content. For the trolls, why don't you go ahead and fact track me? Oh, <laughs> do you see what I did there? By the way, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. What's special about this new Intrepid, then? I'm glad you ask. Silently. Or not. Because I'm going to tell you anyway. And hopefully, we'll learn something we did, or I suppose didn't, want to know. Active in the 25th century and rounding off at approximately 578 and a half meters, similar in size to the Neo-Constitution class USS Titan A, they even appear to have the same nacelles looking at the master systems displays of the two. The difference between the nacelles of the Intrepid and the Titan now that the Intrepids are mounted on the posterior extension of the main hull, which also houses the main impulse engines. Between the nacelles, the warp field governor makes a conspicuous return, something that hasn't always been a staple part of ship design, but has appeared in most 25th century designs to ensure a stable warp field. A smaller, underslung engineering section gives the ship a fairly unique look compared to conventional ship configurations, but at this point, as long as it looks vaguely like something we've seen before, then the fandom seems to have a fairly easy time of accepting it. Don't lie, you know it's true. Search your feelings. Defended by the oh-so-handy deflector shields, which, uh, well, apparently don't do much against shuttles making suicide runs at the nacelles. Oh well. They're also armed with two forward-facing torpedo or probe launchers, which have an ominous red glow when they're primed and ready to fire. In addition, there's aft-facing torpedo probe launchers located between the hangar and lower long-range sensor array. The ship has four phaser strips, two on the dorsal, two on the ventral, port and starboard of the saucer. This appears to be the only four she carries, though, likely giving a full coverage of protection from a broad angle, and this arsenal is actually pretty standard for a 25th century Federation starship. Although whether she holds quantum torpedoes is any bugger's guess. The hull is littered with specialized sensor equipment. Most noticeably, we see a dome on the ventral saucer, complemented by another atop the bridge module. <laughs> and guess where that is? Both are used for perimeter and planetary scans. Lateral sensors run the circumference toward the middle, located on both upper and lower sides of the saucer, which are luminous for some reason. And another is at the extreme aft of the primary hull. This would be the parking camera. The saucer also features its own deflector array, situated between the sensor dome and the lateral sensor strips. On the secondary hull, you'll find the extra long range super special mega duty sensor. No, seriously, its name is almost that silly. The extra long range special duty and sensor deflector array. Ugh. And there's a smaller version of it too, facing the opposite direction. Either side of the forward deflector, you'll also find wide and narrow range EM sensors. The main hangar, carrying at least 14 shuttles total, is located between the aft launchers and the upper lateral sensors. Either another is located elsewhere, as Commander Rolaren's shuttle was cleared to dock in the starboard bay, or the main hangar is just divided in two and referred to as port and starboard. Who knows? Don't answer that. Type 14 shuttles are 16 meters in length, though, and they're used for long-range high-warp travel, not intended for Grand Theft Auto missions to the Elios. They're accessed via a rear hatch and an integrated airlock. Though apparently not very big, it looked massive when it was docked to the Elios 12. 
Oh, sorry, the Elios XII for those pedants in the audience. No, seriously, though, thank you for subscribing, guys. Your feedback is important. Behind the bridge, but still within the saucer's circumference, you'll find an engineering staging lift, which is also present on the Sagan-class starships. These were presumably so auxiliary vehicles like cargo transports and worker bees could transfer equipment and materials to the engineering section directly. It would stand to reason that this class is of a scientific persuasion for deep space assignments, given that the ship has more sensors than guns, it would appear. In addition, it has more than one deflector, which not only features on vessels that can separate, but on science types in particular as well, such as the Intrepid class, the Pathfinder class, and the Nova class. I doubt this would allude to a separation ability in particular, but you never know, and honestly, I doubt we ever will. The USS Intrepid was sent to intercept the Titan A, following the latter's return from an unauthorized trip to the Riton system. She carried Commander Ro Laren of Starfleet Intelligence with orders to question Admiral Picard and Captain Riker with the possibility of charges for treason. Bit on the nose for them to send her to do that. Oh well. Unbeknownst to the Titan at the time, a legion of evolved changelings had infiltrated the intrepid security crew in order to get to Jack Crusher, the highly sought after son of Picard and Dr. Crusher. It only became fully realized by Captain Shaw when Rose shuttle was rigged to explode and her saboteurs beamed back to the Titan. Meanwhile, the majority of the Titan's personnel, save for a skeleton team, had been transferred for reassignment. Though they were transferred by transporters, we know that the transporters were messed with and placed Borg DNA into those being transported. I hope they're okay and haven't developed a crippling phobia both transporters and the TNG crew now. Yeah, they're probably fine. Roe, having not trusted anyone on the crew of the Intrepid, managed to gain the trust and understanding of Picard himself. She sacrificed herself by flying her shuttle into the Intrepid's port nacelle as it exploded, which caused considerable damage, enabling her former commanding officer and company the chance to warp away. Initially, you'd think the Intrepid was quickly repaired and back out, chasing the Titan decoy signal beacons. However, this ship is actually the USS Trumbull, NCC-72370, though dialogue erroneously referred to her as the Intrepid. The Intrepid itself was, however, repaired shortly thereafter and was present at Earth during Frontier Day, where its crew, all of them under 25 years old, were all briefly assimilated and suddenly took control of the ship for the Borg Collective. Just a normal day in Starfleet! Da -da 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 -da. <coughs> Sorry. The Intrepid, along with the USS Cochrane, the USS Hikaru Sulu, and the USS Luna, were directly responsible for destroying the USS Excelsior, the b when its crew had taken back control of their ship from the Borg, only to be destroyed by the remaining ships in fleet formation mode. The captain is not known at this time, as they were only briefly referenced by Ro to voice her distrust of them, as she believed they too were replaced by a changeling. Though this captain was probably killed when the Borg took control of the ship. Whoopsie daisy. A number of the security staff were also replaced, one of which held the rank of Lieutenant Commander, so quite likely, the Chief of Security. And what better way is there to get your team to fall in line than to take over the mind of their department head? Solid strategy, I've used it before myself. Cue Leo DiCaprio toasting gif. As of this moment, there are only two known ships to what I'm now permanently calling the Dude class. Of course, the Intrepid and her sister ship, the aforementioned USS Trumbull, along with the USS Yorktown and the USS Mestral, which were assigned to track down the USS Titan, however were led on a merry goose chase by those pesky decoy transponders. The name of the class was provided by Dave Blass. I promise I didn't rhyme that on purpose. But he provided it, of course, via the Twitterverse. He emphatically stated that it was in tribute to Dorothy Duder, the late wife of Doug Drexler. The registry is also in reference to her date of birth. July 9th, 52. Drexler co-designed the class along with Bill Krauss. A lineage of ships leading up to the Duderstadt class had also previously been created and helped show the evolution of its unique shape and configuration. 
Ships of the lineage go as far back as 2258, starting with the NX-971 Blackhawk reconnaissance ship. It was later succeeded by the Tornado-class interceptors in 2268, Hornet-class interceptors in 2286, Wasp-class interceptors in 2390, up until the Duderstadt-class cruisers arrived in 2401. All of which share a similar all-in-one saucer to nacelle setup, with an underslung secondary hull section. These ships, all designed by Bill Krauss, a notable Star Trek Picard Season 3 ship designer, and they were all actually based on an old fan design. This configuration of a saucer, posterior secondary hull, and an underslung structure can trace its inspiration back to a 1985 fan-produced blueprint by Larry Miller, the Hornet-class starship itself. With one of the Duderstark classes being named the USS Intrepid, we can presume that the previous USS Intrepid was lost in action at some point, or simply decommissioned. After all, they seem to be decommissioning ships every five years now. The whole Intrepid class itself might also be decommissioned, with seemingly none active in Starfleet by the 25th century. The USS Trumbull, as stated previously, was named after VFX director Douglas Trumbull, though back in the day, he was the director of special photographic effects. He did this for the motion picture, which was full of special photographics effects that really made that film... long? Nah, too obvious. Shine! There we go. Unfortunately, however, he passed away in 2022, and so he was honored with a ship of his own, the USS Trumbull NCC-72370. So far, there has been no real legacy connection between any of the ships to bear the name Intrepid, other than perhaps that they were all tasked with science-based missions. While yes, the Intrepid was a light cruiser, the Excelsior class was an explorer type, they too could have been outfitted to fill a more scientific role, along with the Intrepid and Intrepid and is it just me, or is the word intrepid now beginning to sound like it's not a real word? What are your thoughts? Not just on that, but on the connections. Or is it just for the ease of using a name that is familiar to stand out to the audience? Let us know in the comments below. Meanwhile, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. And you can also, of course, follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Lieutenant Commander Adam, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper, my friends. Intrepid, 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 intrepid.